Hello, this is a video in the field of software architecture about dependency, modular design, and microservices architecture. Basically all the same concept, but with different names and different fields. I'd like to emphasize that this is not an exhaustive video, but rather a quick and dirty one to fulfill my very personal needs at the moment and maybe give you a rough overview of what's happening here. First, I'd like to show you how you can imagine or visualize dependency and independency and their consequences, and then I'll try to give you a more or less concrete example in web development that I've seen over the years. Also, make sure to read the video description to get any updates that are not in the recorded video. Okay, imagine you have like some point A and some point B and you want to convey a message from A to B. And to do that, you have like a chain of people who speak different languages. The first one listens only. He can only listen to English and he can only speak German. The second one can only, uh, can speak German and English. Let's say he can speak German and English. Uh, he usually speaks English. And the last one speaks only English and English. And the communication is in this direction. Imagine you have this scenario. What's happening is that like this guy, let's call him guy number one, and this is the guy number two and guy number three. Okay, guy number one, he gets a message in English and speaks in German, the message content, speaks it to guy number two and guy number two, because guy number three only understands English, translates it back to English, and then guy number three tells it to be, and everything is all right. But there is one simple problem, one small problem, not simple, but one small problem, that this guy here is not very good at translation and sometimes needs some help if the translation is correct. So what he does is actually, uh, he's asking uh, the guy three for advice. So he might, might translate some stuff and then ask him and like he talks back and maybe they, maybe they, they have like a little bit of chat, a conversation. Is this correct? Yeah, my sense. And then maybe they tell B or like the guy three tells B, which might be, I don't know, maybe this is the boss. Very nice. So it's very important that the boss gets a very accurate English, right? So that's the reason why two and three are like having a discussion on which is the best translation, right? And what what happens now if like the boss decides, well, we, we have to like the, the guy three, like he, he gets way too much money and like, I don't know, we can make him get less money. So we have to throw him away. Okay. So we're gonna throw him away. And instead we're gonna put in a new guy well, he just needs to have the same qualifications, right? So he can speak English and English. Let's call him the guy number four. And as before, like there's a message coming in. One guy number one listens to English, translates to German and or speaks in German. And this guy like gets the German and wants to translate to English, but like he has some problems, he has some troubles. He wants to ask this guy number four, but guy number four turns out to be a total dick. Can I say this on YouTube? I don't know. And he says, well, I, I don't help you with your job. Well, I do my job, you do your job. So, well, there's no communication here. So what happened is that maybe the message that he sends to, that he, like the, the message that he conveys to, to number four, maybe it's a little bit flawed, right? Maybe it's a little bit flawed. So uh, guy number, sorry, guy number four, then tells that a little bit flawed message to the boss and the boss has like no idea what's actually going on. And the question is, what happened? And the answer is, well, there was a dependency between guy number one and guy number three, or saying this in a different way, guy number two, sorry, guy number two was dependent on guy number three. That means if guy number three leaves this chain, if guy number three maybe leaves the company, then guy number two is like left alone. He cannot do his job. So there was a dependency to for guy number two to fulfill his job. And this is exactly what's happening in, in programming a lot. Let's do this a little bit more abstract for this for a moment. Let's say this is like A and let's say, I don't know, we have some imagine, let's let's imagine this like boxes, but let's say every guy is a function, right? Every guy is a pure function. A pure function is a function where, where you put something in and you get something out. There's no dependency. You put something in, you get something out. There's no dependency. The cosine function, for example, might be, uh, is a pure function. Okay, and at the end we have the boss here, right? So this is a function, right? Let's let's put an F here, F, F, F. And like you put something in and you get something out. You put something in, you get something out. You put something in, you get something out. Oh yeah. I don't know why I put this rhythm in it. Oh damn, this is staying on YouTube forever. But actually this is not a pure function, right? So there was a dependency. Let's, okay, the dependency was on guy number three, but let's draw the dependency here, right? So there was actually like a, 
let's call it a functional dependency. I'm not sure this is, if this is a good term. So in order for this function to fulfill its job, it needs this thing, whatever it is. Like it can be anything, right? M maybe it's a specific CPU. Maybe it's it's a specific sound card driver, whatever, right? And in a second, you take this thing away, this function cannot work properly anymore, right? So whatever this delivers is like maybe gibberish, right? So what happens here is gibberish comes out to be. It's not good. We have a dependency. And worst case is you have a dependency that you don't see. And this is actually quite often the case with people, right? Because people are so complex in their networks, right? You, you take out a dependency and some, somehow a worker gets very inefficient. This is how you can imagine dependency or independency. If you have independency, well, what you have is, or what you don't have is exactly this. So there's no outside connection, right? So whatever happens to the outside, this function, this guy number two can also keep working. That would be independent. That would also be modular. This would also be how a microservice architecture should be. One microservice should not be dependent on, a, on another microservice that makes it basically one service, in, depending on how you want to interpret that. Okay, so far to the visualization. I hope this helps. If you have questions so far, put them in the comments. Okay, let's go down a little bit. Okay, let's go on with the more or less concrete example. I say more or less because I'm not writing any code. Imagine you have, um, like I said before, you have maybe maybe you have some components. You you write uh, some some web app and you have some components in that web app. Let's me draw them like these boxes here. And well, you designed them. You designed them very well. They're very very independent, right? So you can exchange any box, or you maybe can test any box. Testing a box is basically like. Uh, you can imagine it like like you have a box and you have like maybe like microchips right maybe imagine it like microchips and microchips have these inputs and outputs and if you want to check if the microchip actually is working you just put them in a, in a like kind of a test environment and you test everything in the test environment and when everything or if everything works right uh, then you can actually put it inside the circuit board right and you know if there is some failure now it's probably somewhere outside the chip right because the chip works properly you already tested that and this is the way you also want to build your function, uh, your your independent components. Okay, so imagine you have these kinds of independent components. Everything works totally fine, and of course, because it's a web app, you have some server somewhere, right? And imagine also the server communication is totally is totally independent. So you don't have like calls like uh, like this. You don't want direct server calls, right? What you want instead is that whatever call you're going to make is, for example, is like a callback that gets input into the chip, and whatever the chip or like this component wants to do is like based on what you put in here. So if you put in here, uh, let's say a mock database, maybe that's a, that, that's a database connection, right? Or let's, uh, let's say a real database connection, well then it's going to do some real database logic. If it's a mock database, then it's doing some mock database logic, whatever. But the point is there's no direct connection outside, right? And let's go with that. Like, right, let's say you, you have all this stuff, right? Everything is perfectly fine and then uh, some guy comes up and and like says, well, we need we need an authorization system, right? And um, we need to cover like all the stuff, and uh, we want one entrance, and this is like the login, right? This is the login. And what he does is like he he creates like kind of a pipe, kind of like kind of a pipe around all your components, right? Let's make it like this. And the login system, for example, has a direct connection to the server. Uh, to the authentication server that might be only like online right it might be for example the let's say the AWS Cognito service right maybe that's maybe that's the connection here and there was no maybe this this single part only the login part was not independent so it did not have these kinds of connections but instead like had a direct connection to the outer world and is also the gate to all the rest of your web application that means with this single thing being dependent on this server, your whole application becomes suddenly uh, becomes suddenly dependent on this server. So let's actually draw this connection in red. I know this is not nice coloring, but red indicates not good. You don't want this connection direct because it's threatening your whole architecture. Why does it threaten your whole architecture? Well, of course, if you have like you have all your usernames, your developer usernames here, right? So everything works fine. But what happens if you lose your internet connection? Or what happens if, if this service is like about to like transition to a different service? What do you do in that amount of time? What, 
well, this gate is not longer, like, this doesn't work properly, right? And because you made the call within the component itself, you can also not easily replace it, replace it. So it's threatening the whole web application in regard of dependency. And also, of course, this obstructs uh, development itself. Okay, what? That was too abstract? Okay, let's give you a more concrete example. Again, you have a web application. You have two components. They don't even need to be connected like before. Um, and let's say you have some kind of um, authorization service, right? And what you do is, well, you have, you're working in the browser, right? So you use cookies to store that information service. And uh, well, every time when you store something, you say something like set cookie, uh, I don't know the exact term, but and, and here you can maybe say get cookie, right? And maybe you have uh, an, another thing here that also like maybe gets the cookie to like check for if, if something is authorized or not, right? And so far, so good, right? But now someday some guy decides, say, well, cookies are not like my cup of tea, so we instead use local storage. So please, can you can you can you change the application to use local storage? Okay, what do you do? You need to change this part. Well, okay, it's not set cookie anymore. It's set, set, set storage now. Uh, what? But set storage that that doesn't exist. Well, in um, storage is local storage and cookies. Well, they work kind of differently. Maybe I don't know. Okay, so you have to change this one. Maybe figure out some some logic here. Maybe change this one. Figure out some logic here. Change this one. Figure out some logic here. And this is exactly what you don't want. This is like a hell of a change for something so simple. And why did this, this happen? Because all these components were dependent on the functionality of the cookie, right? So what you accept instead one, let's keep this here. You want some component in between to make this a little bit easier to draw. Let's draw all these three components here. And you have something like, I, I don't give it a name for now because that might confuse people. And you have the cookies here, right? And every time when something's happening, well, they go over here. They go through this component. And they also don't say set cookie or get cookie, but instead they say something, for example, like uh, get username, right? Or get get authorization, something like So it's more concrete calls that are here. And this, this very component is doing all the, like the magic stuff and doing it with the cookies. And when you now, when your boss or some other guy comes to you and say, well, we want to use local storage. Well, it, it doesn't matter to these guys over here. Instead, it, it actually matters only here, local storage. You just exchange cookies with local storage. And like maybe if, you're, di if you did your job good, you only have to replace two different calls and that is set and get, right? If you're good and if you're lucky, depending on the complexity of your problem, you only replace these two things, set and get. And then you don't use cookies anymore, but local storage, everything works fine. You didn't have to change anything in the, in the rest of the system. This is what you would want as an architecture, a more independent architecture. Sure, of course, yes, you still have a dependency from this component to cookies, but you don't have a dependency from these, all these components to the cookie, right? So only one component is dependent on the cookies. So whatever, whenever this part changes, then you only have to change one part in your system. This is what you want. Okay, how can you call this thing? I generally call it an adapter because it's maybe kind of an adapter. If you say you translate from get user to like maybe get cookie and you give it a like concrete cookie, like the user key, something like that. But um, I personally wouldn't necessarily say that that's good or bad. It's just the way I do it. Um, I would also, I could also imagine the word interface, which is probably, but it's probably too abstract, too rough, and is used in too many other situations. So I guess many people would probably misinterpret this if you call this thing an interface, if it's an implementation, right? Okay, I hope this was uh, concrete enough for you. If you have any questions, comments especially also, please let me know. And because I'm at the end of my sentence, the voice should actually go down.